Okay, so in this pen, you can see up here that they've taken an old greenhouse and converted it into a chicken house. That's perfectly fine. And then I have a few pictures of the different tractor set, um, trailer systems. And here, I've got a picture here that I'm trying to illustrate the fact that if you want to use a nest box system in your pen that has a door on the front that you can close, at night you can close those birds up so that you know that they're in a safe environment through the night when most of your predators are going to be on the prowl. So you can actually lock them in this, this pen and they would be perfectly fine until the next morning you can go out and open your pen and feed birds and then they can come out. So that's, that's something to consider if you do use the chain link dog pen where the holes are a little bit bigger, having some kind of nest box that you can close up. A lot of these will just have a little single plank roost on the front of them that's built on hinges and you just push that hinge up and that plank will sit in front of the nest box so that they're stuck in that nest box through the night. So these pictures are just to illustrate that anything works. So basically use your imagination. Um, you can create anything you want to and you can use supplies that you already have at home. You can see down here, somebody used their trampoline as a chicken pen. <laughs> um, I wouldn't recommend jumping on that trampoline now. So feeding your flock. We've already talked about the nutrition that you're going to need for each one of these flocks. You do need an endless supply. Um, for a one gallon, I would recommend about 12 to 15 full grown sized birds on a one gallon feed water. Um, one gallon water with chicks, you could probably put about the 20 chicks that you're going to have for sure. You could put more than that on a one gallon. I would recommend at least a five gallon water for the birds that you're going to have. Um, I think this is about a half gallon water, so you're going to need more than that for sure. But you need to have ample space that all the birds can get to and drink if need be. Your feeder supply, you're going to want three to four inches per bird. Now that can be in a round pan like we have here, or that can be in a long narrow trough. At any rate, you just need to have about three to four inches per um, bird of feeder space. Always check your feed before feeding. So even if I buy a fresh bag of feed at the co-op or the tractor supply or your feed store, that does not guarantee that that feed is adequate. Look at it, touch it, see if it's clumped together, um, and I smell it. If it has an odd smell, then you do not need to feed that to ch chickens. Bring it back to your store and get a new bag. Um, these chickens will eat pretty much anything, so if your feed is somewhat molded, they still might eat that feed, so you need to be careful. Also, with that being said, keep your feed in a clean, dry location. Even if your feed is okay when you buy it, if it gets wet or rodents get in it, something happens to it along the way, then now it's not good to feed to your chickens. So be sure you keep it in a dry, closed area and it's away from predators and, and rodents. This could be a trash can with a lid on it that you keep by the pen. Um, just something that keeps that food safe. So your starter, this, this slide is basically what I've already said, but it's in one slide format and y'all will have these handouts your agent should give if you're participating. So this is just all on the same page so that you can see what you're going to need to feed over the course of the time. You've got your starter up to your six weeks, 22 to 24% protein. You've got six to 14 weeks on your grower and then you're going to finish out with a layer from 14 weeks until the end of the lifespan for these birds. So now that you know how to raise those chicks and those chickens, we need to keep our flock healthy. Vaccinations and biosecurity are very important in this activity. And why are they so important? They're going to protect you and your flock, and they're going to protect your neighbor's flock. So not only are you worried about keeping your flock safe, but you also want to keep your neighbor's flock safe. 
You also don't want to waste your time and money on this. So I'd hate for you to spend the money and your time and every, everything that you're going to put into these birds and six weeks down the road contract some disease and those birds die. So now all that time and money is wasted. Sanitization is crucial in your biosecurity and your vaccinations. If you can keep your flock clean and your environment clean, that's going to cut down a lot of your disease problems. In this event that we're doing with the CHAIN project, we are going to do three vaccinations. So our vaccination program is going to consist of the fowl pox, which is a wing web vaccination. We're also going to vaccinate for Newcastle and infectious bronchitis, which is in the water source. So for fowl pox, you're going to, it's, it's basically a vial that you're going to dip a needle in and you're going to vaccinate that chick in the skin on their wing. It's not a, um, it's not in the flesh, it's not in the meat portion of the wing, it's just through that skin. Your Newcastle and infectious bronchitis is going to be in the water source. This can be eye dropped into the bird and there's some that can go in the nasal cavity, but the easiest thing to do is to add it into the water source. So your label should tell you how much 20 birds are going to need and what water source you have. You would put that in your water source and that's how you're going to do. I've already dis dis discussed coccidiosis and talked about the coccidia stats, so that can be found in some food sources. It is not necessary, but I do recommend it, especially if you're going to have an outdoor bird. And your avian influenza is what um, Betty Roberts is going to send people to your county fairs to do swabs on. We're not vaccinated for AI, but we are going to do swabs at the county fair, and this is necessary in order to get your birds NPIP certified. Now, I don't have a vaccination program and schedule on here, and the reason for that is every vaccine is different. You can order vaccines. Um, most people use Jeffers because Jeffers will send you single doses of vaccines. So a thousand dose vaccine for your Newcastle and bronchitis is going to run you about eight dollars. Fowl pox is going to be five, six dollars, um, somewhere around there. They're very inexpensive. You can keep these refrigerated over a, a portion of a time but the important thing is that you read that label so I recommend going ahead and calling Jeffers before you get your chicks getting that vaccine ordered that way you can read your label and follow all of your directions on that bottle in order to vaccinate your chicks you can order these in bulk and they're very cheap um, so maybe if your county wants to go in together and order these and vaccinate all your chicks at one time, you could do that and it's le less expensive. So here's just a picture of your fowl pox and this is a really bad case of fowl pox. But this is what fowl pox can do to a bird and you can see it's extremely uncomfortable. So by giving this vaccine, we are going to prevent this from happening. And that's the importance of vaccinations, is we don't want any of our birds to go through anything like this. So that's the importance of it. Uh, that's the reason that we, we go through the vaccination program. So biosecurity. Vaccination is very important, but we can't vaccinate from everything. So that's why biosecurity is crucial in this chain project. We want to keep our flock away from any other fowl. So if you have chickens on your property already, do not intermingle. Do not intermingle different ages either. You want to keep these birds separate and you want to keep your pen separate. You don't want them interacting between the pen, being able to touch one another. Uh, you don't want to allow individuals around your flock. So not only do we want to keep fowl away, we also want to keep humans away as best we can. Now I understand that you can't keep all wild fowl away from your flock, but if you have them in a secure pen, it's going to prevent a lot of fowl from, from entering and getting close to your chickens. As far as people go, I do understand that we've got 8 to 18 year old and it's over the summer, so you are going to have friends staying the night, coming over, and you can't prevent them from coming close and in contact with your chickens but you can prevent them from spreading disease to those birds. So if they have their own birds, make sure that they don't wear clothes that they've already come in contact to, with their own birds. Make sure that they don't wear their shoes that they've worn in their own pen. 
that they've maybe showered before they go close to your birds, um, that they've at least washed their hands. You can maybe provide a foot bath at the gate of your door that is at least going to get rid of anything that's on your shoes when you enter your pen. You want to attempt to disinfect before you leave and enter your flock at all times. So you want to attempt to get rid of anything when you're coming out of your pen and you want to attempt to get rid of anything when you're going into your pen. That is very, very important. Do not intermingle ages like I said before. If you bring other birds onto your farm, just because we vaccinated these chicks and they are 14 weeks of age, doesn't mean that those chicks can't be carrying something. They might look well and healthy and you get them on your property and they could have something and then spread that to your chickens. You don't wanna let this happen. Like I said before, that's time and money and effort that you've put into them and you're gonna lose. So it's crucial to keep these birds healthy. So moving on to our record keeping. Record keeping is 50% of your judging criteria in this event. The more, the better. We want everything you can possibly have in this. You do not have to keep, you don't have to use the record keeping guide that 4-H uses. You can simply get a three ring binder and keep everything in a three ring binder. You want all of your certifications. So once you watch this video with your county agent and they certify you, You'll have a certificate saying that you've completed it. You'll also have a waiver that you've signed saying that you're gonna to participate to the best of your ability. Those will go in your record keeping book. Any of your MPIP papers that you receive from Betty Roberts, you wanna keep in that book. You're gonna to have to have those, especially if you go to your state competition. You have to have those in order to compete. Your vaccination records, so all your schedules and when you did your vaccinations, every little detail. If that flock becomes sick or shows any signs of sickness, you wanna have that documented. You also wanna call Betty Roberts or myself and notify us if there is something wrong with the birds so that we can possibly get them better and prevent anything from happening further. You wanna keep up with your feeding schedules. So if you feed twice a day or once a day, you can keep a schedule of that when you feed those birds. If you give them feed ad libitum, so let's say they have an unlimited supply, you can still keep a feeding schedule. You can put on there what size bucket you're feeding with and how often you're having to fill that bucket up. So you might not have an everyday schedule, but you can at least put a schedule on there. Keep a visitor's log. So if anyone comes on your premises and, and intermingles with your birds, you wanna have them sign in on a visitor's log this log will not only be good for your record keeping, but it'll also be good for you because if those birds show signs of sickness, you can go back to that log and see who's been on your property in the last couple of weeks and hopefully trace that back and see what, what they have. And pictures, pictures will be great in this. So if you observe anything, you can always write that in your record book and place a picture by it of what you're seeing. You can take pictures of your birds, you feeding your birds, anything that you want to add is great in this record keeping book. So with that, if you have any questions, please contact me. I have um, a summary here that the agents can use. So these are all your dates that you're gonna need in this event. You can order and deliver by June 4th through 8th. Your county fairs can be set up anywhere between September 4th through the 23rd. Your state show will be on October 20th. Your wing bands will be shipped to your office, so I do need a list of how many participants you're gonna have, and I need this in time to get you wing bands shipped to your office. Um, I'm gonna need a list of participants, their addresses, and the numbers that are gonna be located on that wing band from you. Um, I'm also gonna need a list of the dates of your county fair. I need that about a month in advance so that I can get that to Betty Roberts and she can have a representative at your county fair. Here is a summary of all of the hatcheries we will be using. These are not all of the MPIP certified hatcheries, but these are the hatcheries that we have cho chosen to use. And you do need to use one of these hatcheries. So we've got Meyer, Ridgeway, Ideal, Hoover, Mount Healthy, and McMurray. And I've got all of their contact information listed on this sheet. 
So you can visit their website or you can call them um, by phone. Most of these are open 8 to 5, so they do have regular operating hours just like any business. They usually overnight ship too, so and most of them are going to hatch on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So here's my information. If you have any questions about this video or in the future, if you have any, any questions about your flock or something that you're doing, please feel free to contact me. This is my email and my office number. I'm not always in my office. You know with Extension, we are out and about a lot. But my email does, I do receive this through my phone and I will respond to email in a timely manner. I can usually respond within the hour. Um, and if you'll leave me a message on my phone, I can usually get back to you within the next couple of days. So that is the end of our slideshow. I'm going to move into a little bit of what I have on the table. You will receive all of these packets. Um, this pamphlet is very important for you to keep up with. This is your poultry exhibits regulations, and this is Betty Roberts' card. So if you have any questions about setting up your county fair or any disease questions, anything that's concerning Betty Roberts, don't lose this because that has all of her information on it, and you'll receive this in the mail. You're also going to get a list of some different reading materials on how to keep diseases away. We've got some different pamphlets on Newcastle, avian influenza, um, different diseases that you might see, and then how to deal with those diseases, how to, how to make sure to keep your flock healthy. So even simple little bookmarks that, that tell you look for signs, report your sick birds, and protect your birds at all times. So all of that you'll receive, and then I'll also send you a printout of the presentation that we just did. So all that information is in this. You'll receive your certificate. So I'll need every participant's name so that I can fill out your, your certificate and get it shipped to your office. Once you've watched this with your county agent, this will come in the mail and it needs to go in your record book. I also have... Okay, this says, I, and your name will be inserted, promise to follow all the instructions and guidelines given to me by the extension agent and specialist who are assisting with the Mississippi State University 4-H poultry chain project. I will care for my chicks and follow welfare and biosecurity practices to the best of my ability. As a chain project participant, I understand that once receiving my chicks, I am dedicated to the project and will participate fully in the county fair and if given the opportunity, the state fair. And you will sign this as long, along with a witness, which should be your county agent that you watch this video with. And this will be kept in your record book. So this is something that we will be looking for at the county fair. It needs to be in your record book along with all your other certificates. So let's move on and I'm going to demonstrate wing banding to the county agents. If you have any questions after watching this video, feel free to call me um, if you have concerns about how to do this. But I will send you a box of metal wing bands. These are your wing bands that you're going to be using. Each one has a, a four digit ID code and every one is going to be different. So every kid should have a different number located on their wing band. So if you've got your chick here, Danny's holding the wing out. You want to keep the head in between your thumb and your pointer finger away from the body. And when you extend this wing out, you can feel that bone and you can feel that tissue in the wing. We don't want to go through that. We don't want to puncture that tendon or anything. You're going to look for that piece of skin. So I actually have the skin in between my fingers here. It's paper thin. That's all we're going to puncture. Okay, so find that piece of skin. And this tag has a sharp edge and a dull edge. Don't puncture with the dull edge. You want to use this sharp edge. So I'm going to go through the bottom. I'm left-handed and a little bit backwards. I'm going to go through the bottom of this wing. I'm going to push through. And you can see that now that I'm finished, the chick doesn't even realize I've done anything. So there's a hole located on the top. 
I'm going to push that through and bend it over. And now I have my ID number located on the top of that band. Let's bend this the other way. And it's locked and it shouldn't come off the wing. So that chick, that ID, will now stay with that chick through the lifespan of the chicken. Okay, so again, I'm going to demonstrate this again. We're going to go through the top of the wing this time. So for all you that aren't lefties out there, you can go through the top of the wing. I'm still going to find that skin portion. Um, if it helps, you can always keep your fingers behind that skin so that you know where you're at. I'm going to extend that out so I feel that wing web, that really thin portion, and I'm just going to go straight through the top of the wing. So now I'm going to push through that hole and lock that wing web, that wing band in. So again, that ID number will follow this chick through the lifespan. All right, that concludes the video for our poultry chain project, our 4-H chain project. I thank everyone for viewing, and now that you're finished, you can get your certificate, you are certified, and once you get your chicks, you'll be locked in and ready particip to participate. Please remember to have fun with this, and it is supposed to be an enjoyment for the kids. Thanks.